as forces loyal to Khalifa Haftar moved on Tripoli, the U.S. Secretary of State sounded the alarm. This won't be resolved through force of arms. There's just uh, no way that's going to take place. We, there's a U.N. process. Uh, we've been part of that. Uh, General Haftar has been part of that. We, we urge General Haftar to stand down, uh, move back to the negotiating table so that we can get a political resolution in Libya. But then, soon after, the president picked up the phone, and in a readout of the call, the White House said President Donald Trump recognized Field Marshal Haftar's significant role in fighting terrorism and securing Libya's oil resources, and the two discussed a shared vision for Libya's transition to a stable, democratic political system. That, too many, seemed like an endorsement, including to the Democratic members of the Foreign Affairs Committee, who have sent this letter to the Secretary of State. Writing the call has led to uncertainty regarding the U.S. position and that Libyan armed actors are using the confusion to continue the conflict. They are urging him to clarify the country's position. This is part of a broader fight for influence. According to federal filings, just last month, Haftar's organization agreed to pay $2 million to a U.S. lobbying firm to help improve his image in D.C. The White House says he has not been invited to meet with the president at the White House. But they've said very little about which side of the conflict the U.S. actually supports. Members of Congress say that needs to change. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington.